Uh, yes, we did a, a project in the Fab Farmers, uh, Fabulous Farmers uh, project, uh, a small case study for the societal cost and benefits of uh, flowering field margins in the Netherlands in the Hoekse Waard region. Uh, there were a lot of people involved. Uh, Martina Paulin was also sometimes at the meetings uh, of Fabulous Farmer together with Michael Richards, Rutgers. Uh, I, I was not involved in the meetings, but Martina has gone to Sweden, uh, back to Sweden, and um, she asked me whether I could present this uh, 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 study. Uh, this is some third content. We we will yeah I will talk something about the purpose of societal cost benefit analysis, the methods, the results, and the conclusions. It's quite straightforward. Um, this is uh, the region we're talking about. Uh, it's uh, in the Netherlands. It's in uh, in the Hoekseward, and you see here the land use uh, in the Hoekseward. Uh, the yellow is all agricultural area, uh, and the red is uh, a build-up area, and the green is uh, mostly nature and forest. We did this uh, societal cost benefit analysis to, to gain more insight into the effectiveness of these kind of measures. What kind of benefits uh, result from these kind of measures? Uh, what are the costs of these measures? And that from a societal point of view, not from the farmer's point of view, but for the society as a whole. So you look what what, what kind of benefits uh, deliver these kinds of measures to the whole of society. So it's wider. Uh, it's it's also looking at the cost, but it does not take into a, take into account all the subsidies and and these kinds of things. That that's uh, uh, not included in the societal cost benefit analysis. Uh, this this uh, this societal cost benefit analysis it's it's it's, it's, it's an assessment instrument. Uh, you use it for yeah. Uh, uh, we use it in the Netherlands for developing or or uh, 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 assessing different scenarios for uh, uh, highways in the Netherlands. We use it for uh, uh, the the, the uh, admission of certain kind of human drugs, etc. It's, it's it's used in all kinds of different policy uh, arenas. Uh, it tries to uh, uh, assess the economic benefits of these kinds of measures and, and, and the cost of these kinds of measures. And it uh, also gives uh, insights in the societal welfare and, and we try to put everything in euros. So we try to put a price on everything. Uh, we followed in this kind uh, in in this study uh, the the general guidelines for the societal cost benefit in the Netherlands they uh, they have been developed by the uh, central planning agency and uh, the planning agency for uh, spatial uh, uh, problems and we also used the natural capital model uh, we developed the natural capital model over the last five years already, six years, together with uh, Wageningen Environmental Research and uh, uh, the uh, uh, Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency, and also together with the Central Bureau of Statistics in the Netherlands, which work on the natural capital accounts. Uh, we did a literature review and we had uh, interviews with all kinds of stakeholders in the region in the Hoeks of Art. At the right side, you see a, a small figure, a schematic uh, figure of the natural capital model. We use, uh, we, we, we calculate all kinds of ecosystem services in this model. For each ecosystem service model, or for e each ecosystem service, there is a model developed. There's a model for plague regulation, there's a model for uh, pollination, there's a model for uh, air filtration, etc. Uh, and all these models, they use the same uh, geographic information, and we estimate all these benefits and costs uh, on uh, on a on a very small scale. On on a 10 meter grid, we estimate these, uh, we calculate these uh, different ecosystem services. Uh, in a societal cost benefit analysis, you have to follow uh, uh, five different steps. The first step is always the, the problem identification. Uh, what, what are the societal challenges? 
and uh, for which a solution is sought, uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, alternatives can you address? Uh, uh, in this case, our problem is, is biodiversity loss and pesticide use. Uh, and, and what kind of alternatives are there in the baseline uh, of this study? Uh, that is, the, uh, we, we assume that there were no field margins in the Hooks of Arc. And in, in the alternative, we assume that the, the field margins are there. So, and we use the case of the Hooks of Art with all the field margins at, at the locations we know of in, in this uh, assessment. Then we evaluated the costs and the benefits of this measure of these field margins over a period of 30 years from 2025 to 2055. Uh, and then we estimated all the effects and the benefits, uh, all kinds of ecological and societal effects and the economic benefits of this. We estimated the costs related to the development and, and the uh, management of, of the field margins and all the results are presented in an overview table uh, standards uh there is also it's also necessary to do always an uncertainty analysis these kinds of analysis are very uncertain and it, it depends really on the different parameters whether your uh, societal cost benefit analysis is, is positive or negative and we also always look at the distribution of the costs and the benefits over the various stakeholders So this is the, the Hooks of Waard region with all the different kinds of uh, flowering strips. Uh, we looked at these strips and we estimated the, the benefits of these strips in the Hooks of Waard. Uh, we looked at the cost of the field march, the investment, uh, the maintenance and the management costs on a yearly basis. And we looked at uh, the impact of pollination of these flower strips on the effect on crop production, because if you have a flower strip, you have less crop production. Uh, we looked at biological pest control. We looked at uh, water quality regulation. So we looked at the reduction of fertilizers, uh, nitrates and phosphates, which are uh, 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 emitted to the surface waters. We looked into the climate regulation uh, uh, and the carbon sequestration in soils. Uh, we found in previous studies that the amount of carbon in these flower strips is higher than in the uh, in the agricultural in the crop fields. Uh, in, uh, and we looked at the natural attenuation capacity and the impacts on biodiversity. We had a lot of data on that. And uh, we looked on recreation and health services. So this is the no field margin. This is the, a, a map we estimated with the natural capital model. Uh, this is once again, this is the hooks of art. And uh, you see here the effective pest control, which is a, a, a rate uh, between zero and a hundred, uh, and we see that the effective pest control is uh, in, in the no field margin alternative, and you see that it increases in the field margin alternative. So the, the amount of natural pest control increases, and uh, we are still further developing this model, so this rate must be translated, what is the effective rate uh, for the uh, 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 for pest control and how much should it be? We don't know at the moment. So we, we hear from the hooks of art, from the farmers over there, that, that for certain crops, they don't need any pesticides anymore. So uh, this is uh, the difference in the crop yield due to the pollination. So these field margins uh, also support uh, certain species of bees and other pollinating insects. And you'll see that certain crops uh, are uh, very, uh, the, this pollination service is very important. These are mostly uh, pumpkins and, and uh, berries and, and these kinds of things. There are not so many uh, of these parcels with these crops in the Hooks of Art, but the parcels which are there do benefit a lot from the pollination, the increase in pollination. 
And uh, it's, it's also, these crops are also, uh, in most cases, they have a high value per hectare. So it's, it's also important to increase the pollinations. Uh, uh, it's an important factor in, in, the, in the total crop production. So we've done all the calculations. Uh, I will, uh, uh, the, the report is available. Uh, at the end, I will give the link to the report. Uh, but this is the overview of all the results. Um, let's start with the main things. Uh, we see that the total monetary benefits are about 3.4 million over 30 years. So that's not so much. Over a period of 30 years, it's about 100,000 uh, euros per year. Uh, so it, it's not so much. Uh, the total costs are uh, uh, about 3.3 million, uh, and and the net present value that's that's if you estimate all the costs and 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 the benefits over this period of uh, 30 years, and you translate it into the monetary value of two, 2025, uh, then uh, the the net present value is only 0.1 million euros so that's that's also not so much uh we can see that the 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 biological pest control is is, is one of the major uh, uh benefits you see here that the crop production is also important water quality regulation this is only for the especially for the nitrogen is important uh the carbon sequestration is, is not so high, the monetary value. Uh, it, that also depends on yeah, uh, the, the uncertainty in, in the, the, the monetary value of a carbon, of one, one uh, ton of carbon. We will see that later on. And you also see that uh, the, the recreation and the health benefits are also quite uh, important. This is the results of the, uh, no, no, this is the input for the uh, uncertainty analysis These are not the results. In the main analysis, we used uh, the values in the first column. So uh, you always use a discount factor in these kinds of societal cost benefit analysis. Uh, you must, yeah, it, it's, it's comparable to the, the rent you get on your bank account, but then in this case, it's a negative rent because you like the money to have it more. Uh, and you, uh, we need to uh, variate uh, this value according to the, the Dutch uh, working group on the, the this uh, discount rate uh, between 1.85 and 2.65. So we, we need to vary it. And it's also uh, the, 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 the analysis itself is very sensitive to these kinds of uh, values. We also looked at uh, longer evaluation periods. We also looked at a period of 50 years and 100 years. Uh, these are the carbon prices. Uh, we standard take at the moment the, uh, uh, the uh, very low high scenario. Uh, in in our analysis, but at the moment, if you look at the IPCC, uh, we are still uh, going to uh, uh, an increase of the temperature of 2.7 degrees. So we actually should have used uh, this these high values because this is for two degrees scenario of uh, the carbon increase. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is all about the amount of carbon in the in the soil. So we use there the data from Valentina Secchi. She did a PhD with us, so she measures a lot of carbon in soil. Uh, this is in the field marshes. This is in the agriculture fields. Uh, these are the shadow prices for these kinds of for nitrogen and phosphate. Uh, we use the, the median values, but you have also higher and lower values. And we change also the hiking factor. That is the amount of the, is the increase uh, of the number of people uh, going to hike uh, in the region due to the uh, field margins. If you have any questions, you may ask them to me. But it will be hard to 
cut a mob, I guess. This is the results of the uncertainty analysis. You see here all the net present values for all of these 12 scenarios. The main analysis is about 0 0.9 uh, actually. And you see that the uh, the net primary value uh, varies between uh, uh, about 440,000 negative to 1.3 million in positive euros. So, you should also see that uh, the most of these scenarios uh, are on the positive side and some are on the negative side. Uh, if we in decrease the number of people uh, which which uh, are going to hike there, then the, 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 the uh, recreation benefits uh, will decrease. If we use the uh, higher carbon prices, then the, uh, the, the net primary value will increase. What you see here is the, the net primary value from each of the scenarios uh, put against the average net primary value per field per hectare of field margin. Yeah, and you also see that that uh, the, this discount rate it, it doesn't matter. This is the reference value, so uh, this is the discount rate. Here is a 50 years uh, uh, analysis, and this is the analysis for 100 years. So uh, that, that's not also big difference. Uh, our study was limited in budget, so we could not do everything. Uh, for instance, we did not uh, look at uh, the, uh, the, the uh, the decreased use of crop protection products, uh, they also will, uh, the, the runoff and, 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 and the amount which gets into the surface water will decrease if you use uh, field margins uh, and it will affect the, the water quality uh, and the drinking water quality in the end. And it will also, in the Netherlands at least, also affect the the uh, Probability that will meet the, all the regulations of the Water Framework Directive. And, and these kinds of costs, et cetera, uh, due to not uh, meeting the Water Framework Directive in 2027, we cannot estimate these values. So uh, it, it, it's possible that there will be a ban on certain plant protection products. I don't know what, what, what is going to happen over there, but, but if we do not meet, we, we will certainly get uh, 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 maybe uh, fines from the European Union, et cetera. So we did not include that. We also not included the, 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 the impacts on the water quality because there are so many plant protection products. So for each plant protection, product, we must estimate the, the benefits for uh, the, the surface water quality. I don't know, there may be more than 300 of these kinds of products we need to address. So that was not possible. Um, it's also, uh, yeah, th there is uh, research on the potential effects of all kinds of uh, pesticides on uh, human health uh, it, that seems to be or uh, there, there are uh, how do you say it uh, uh, possible potential effects or it, it may be related to Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease and that's uh, in uh, at the moment there's a lot of research uh, in uh, the Netherlands going on to uh, to get there more insight on by the University of the Rabau University in Nijmegen. Uh, so, uh, if if that's the case, if if it's uh, it's influencing Alzheimer's and and also the development of Alzheimer's and Parkinson, then that, that yeah, that, that these are also very big costs for uh, human health. Uh, we assume that uh, the, the 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 field margins. Uh, can be entirely used for the crop production, but, but Paul uh, uh, van Rijn told us that that is not all, always the case. Uh, uh, parts of these field margins are, are, cannot be used for crop production. So, uh, uh, um, and he also told us that if, if you, you 
decrease uh, uh, if you develop these field margins and, and uh, you, you want to decrease the amount of pesticides you use or the frequency or you use these margins, then you have to go more often into the field and, and try to scout whether certain pests are there or not. So when we did not include it, uh, we also did not uh, take into to account the new regulations in the Netherlands for buffer strips from the European Union, depending on the size of your parcel, uh, you have to need to have buffer strips uh, where you may not uh, 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 use nutrients or uh, mast or uh, manure and, and pesticides, uh, depending on, on the size of the field. It, it's a half a meter, one meter, two, three, five meters uh, uh, if, if you have very big fields. Uh, so we did not include because this was um, quite suddenly introduced in the lands in the in the beginning of this year. So uh, yeah, the 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 net primary uh, the net present value uh, of of this cost benefit analysis is, is slightly positive. Uh, the benefits are bigger than the costs. Uh, the high benefits, or yeah, it's, it's the recreational and health benefits, and and the crop production is the biggest negative benefit. Uh, we did the uncertainty analysis, and there you see that in most cases the these scenarios uh, remain positive. Uh, the, the variation is not so big, and uh, what you see also is that the costs and benefits are not fairly distributed among the stakeholders. The costs are mostly borne by the farmers. Uh, they 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 have the loss in crop production and they have to to uh, 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 develop these uh, field margins and to manage these field margins. They get subsidies by uh, certain administrative bodies by the Waterschap in the Netherlands or the European Union or the provinces. <laughs> and the benefits are mostly enjoyed uh, by uh, the and. Yeah, the, the, the entire society in the Netherlands or the people living in that region, uh, except for yeah pollination, which is enjoyed by those farmers which produce crops that are, are needed to be pollinated. So uh, yeah, the, 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 this this study shows that these field margins should be economical, feasible, and that we should look into the business case. Uh, because especially because we we did not include all kinds of potential effects and the leaching of these crop protection products and 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 we also need to meet the uh, the directive uh, water framework directive. So and the yeah, I think that uh, we should think about other uh, uh, revenue models for farmers to develop these kinds of measures. And there are yeah, there are all, all kinds of options to 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 finance these kinds of measures from the the, the agricultural uh, common agricultural policy, from the biodiversity strategy, and and the, also in the future from the Nature Restoration Act and these kinds of things. Uh, this is where you can find the report. It's in English. So uh, the website is on the uh, RIVM. <coughs> uh, you can also Google RIVM, Societal Cost Benefit Analysis for Field Margins, and I think you will find it also. And uh, you can download it. And uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, contact me uh, at the given uh, email address, tondenet at rivm.nl.